In this video, we will be investigating piecewise linear functions. The context for this video is that we are choosing a venue for a small party, and we have these three options. The red option will charge an $80 flat fee and $5 per person. The green option will charge $125 flat fee, but this includes the first 15 guests. Each guest after that is charged $10. The blue option has a $50 flat fee and $10 per person for the first 10 guests and then $5 for each additional guest. We can tell from this information that the cheapest option depends on how many guests we're going to have at this party. Let's explore each option a little further and try some actual numbers of guests to see what the total cost would be. We'll first look at the red option, an $80 fee and $5 per person. Let's calculate the total cost for a few different numbers of guests. The $80 fee means that without even any guests there, we still have an $80 cost. The first guest means another $5 for a total cost of $85. The second guest means another $5, so our total is up to $90. This pattern will continue. With each additional guest, we have another $5 added to the total cost. And that $5 per person increase is our constant rate of change, and we have a linear model. The cost equation could be written as the cost equals 80 plus 5g. 80 is the starting amount, and 5 times the number of guests is added into the $80 fee to give us the total cost. If we look at a graph for the total cost of the red option, we'll see the vertical intercept is at 80, our starting amount, that flat $80 fee. And then we have an increasing line. It's a straight line because we have a constant increase of $5 per person. So after one person, we're at 85, two people 90, three people 95, and so on. The constant $5 increase per person is what creates this perfectly straight line. The green option is a little bit more complicated. Like the last example, we start out with a flat fee of $125, which contributes to the total cost without any guests. Adding the first guest doesn't change the total cost because the green plan includes 15 guests with the $125 fee. It's not until we get the 16th guest that we increase the cost beyond the original $125 fee. And each guest after that contributes another $10 to the total cost. We like to use linear models when we can see that we have a constant rate of change. And overall in the green plan, there is not a constant rate of change. The original rate of change is actually zero. The cost does not change as we increase the number of guests. But once we go past 15 guests, now the constant rate of change is another $10 per guest. So overall, it's different. But if we look at these two pieces separately, we'll be able to construct two separate linear pieces. The first part of the green plan has a constant cost of $125. But a total cost of $125 only applies if we have 15 or fewer guests. So we add a note behind this equation to say the cost equals 125 only when g, the number of guests, is less than or equal to 15. And we'll create a separate equation for the second part of the green plan when we have more than 15 guests. One way to write the cost equation for the green plan when we have more than 15 guests would be to say, you're still starting with $125, and we're adding $10 for each guest. But writing cost equals 125 plus 10g won't be accurate, because look what happens when we have 16 guests. We're actually multiplying 16 times 10. We're counting all 16 guests as $10 each. We're not taking into account that the first 15 guests were free. So instead, we should have this quantity, g minus 15. So that when we say we have 16 guests coming, we're going to subtract the first 15 that are free, and we're only left with one person 
who is charged $10. If we had 17 guests, then G would be 17, and we would take away the first 15 free guests, and we'd be left with only two guests that are charged $10 each. So we're still thinking about linear models as having a starting amount and some constant rate of change, but when we have two pieces, we have to be cautious about how we use the variable. We don't want to say just 10G, $10 for every single guest, but we need to subtract 15 from the number of guests before we multiply by 10. And lastly, we're going to include a note about when should we use this equation, and we'll use it when the number of guests is greater than 15. Here's another way that we could write this piecewise linear model. The cost equals could be 125 when the number of guests is less than or equal to 15, or 125 plus 10 times this quantity g minus 15 when g is greater than 15. So we're showing the constant cost when we have 15 or fewer guests, and then this model, which includes $10 for each guest beyond 15, that we'll only use when we have more than 15 guests. We'll be able to graph this piecewise linear model also. We're just going to graph it in two separate pieces. First, we have the constant cost of $125, but this is only applied for the first 15 guests. Once we go beyond 15 guests, we're increasing by $10 per person. We can see our graph is made up of two straight line pieces. Overall, we wouldn't call it linear, but we can definitely see that there are two separate pieces, and each piece is a straight line, a linear model. Lastly, let's look at the blue plan, $50 fee and $10 per person for the first 10 guests, and then $5 for each additional guest. Let's calculate some costs for various numbers of guests. We have a starting amount of $50 without including any guests. Zero guests, total cost $50. Now we have $10 per person for the first 10 guests. So one guest will add $10 to the total cost, bringing it up to 60. Two guests is adding $20, 50 plus 20 to get 70. All the way up for the first 10 guests, which would be 10 guests, $10 each, an extra $100 plus the $50 fee. So we've got a linear model with a starting amount of 50 and a constant increase of $10 per person but this is only for the first 10 guests. After that, we have a different rate of change. The 11th guest only means an increase of another $5, and each guest after that is another increase of $5. So a different rate of change, a smaller rate of change, only $5 per person. So we have another example of a piecewise linear function. The first piece has a starting amount of $50, and then an increase of $10 per guest. And we'll only want to use this model when the number of guests is less than or equal to 10. Once we reach 10 guests, we have a total cost of $150. And our constant rate of increase is down to just $5 per guest. We don't want to just make it 5G because that's $5 for each guest. And we know it's only $5 per guest once we have gone past 10 guests. So instead, we'll use g minus 10. Find the number of guests, subtract 10 because they were included in the $150, and only the remainder, the, the number of guests above and beyond 10, is multiplied by 5. And we'll only use this model when the number of guests is more than 10. So let's look at this piecewise linear model on a graph. Just like the last example, we're going to need to have two separate pieces of the graph. The first piece shows the starting amount of 50 and a constant increase of $10 per guest up through 10 guests. Then we have the second piece of the graph that each guest beyond 10 is only charged $5 per person. So we can see that the line has a slope that is not as steep because instead of increasing by $10 per person, now it is only $5 per person. 
it is a smaller rate of change, so we have a line, this part of the line, that is not as steep. This graph can help us choose which plan would be the cheapest based on the number of guests that we have. If we're only inviting five guests, then five guests, we can see that the blue plan is the lowest. It is $100. The red plan is slightly more at $105. And the green plan is the highest at $125. But if we were inviting 14 guests, then the green plan is the lowest. The red is the middle, and the blue plan is the most expensive. For one last part to this problem, let's figure out how many guests would make the blue plan and the green plan cost the same. We can see that the lines are getting closer and closer to each other so that they will eventually cross. And where they cross is where the two plans have the same cost. It's off the page on this graph, but I wanted to show you how we can do it algebraically anyways. Then we'll come back to the graph and zoom out and see if what we see as a result matches what we calculate algebraically. What that means is we need to use the models for the blue plan and the green plan, and you can see that for both of these we're interested in the second piece of the graph. The first piece of the blue plan ends at 10 guests, and the first piece of the green plan ends at 15. We're past 20 guests where these two plans are the same. So we're going to be using the pieces of those two linear models that we use when we have more than 20 guests. From the green plan, we have $125 flat fee plus $10 per person, but only once we've gone past 15 guests. And for the blue plan, $150 included the $50 fee plus $100 for the first 10 guests at $10 each, and then $5 per guest beyond 10. So we've set the green plan equal to the blue plan. The cost of the green plan equals the cost of the blue plan, but these costs depend on the number of guests. So we're interested in figuring out what does G equal that makes the green plan equal the blue plan. First, we want to simplify what we can looking at each side individually. On the green side, we see a place to do a distribute. Distribute the 10 times G minus 15. That gives us 10g minus 150, and we're bringing down the 125. Right after we distribute, we usually look for like terms, and we have the positive 125 and the negative 150, both constants that we can combine. That will give us a negative 25 plus 10g. We don't have any other like terms on the left side, so let's put that on hold and simplify what we have on the right side. There's an opportunity to distribute the 5. That gives us 5g minus 50 and bringing down the 150. And again, we have some like terms, the 150 and the negative 50. That leaves us with 100 plus 5g. Nothing more to simplify on the right side, so we're ready to start working with both sides together. We see terms with the variable g in two different places, so let's get rid of the 5g on the right side. When we're working to eliminate some terms, we have to be sure that we do these changes to both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. We're left with just 100 on the right side, but on the left side we combined 10g minus 5g to equal a positive 5g, and we're bringing down the negative 25. Now that we have the variable term in just one place, let's work to get the constant terms on the other side of the equation. So this negative 25, we're going to eliminate with the opposite plus 25. That gets the constant out of the left side. We're left only with the variable term 5g. On the right side, we added 25 to keep the equation balanced, and we're looking at 125. So we're ready to finish solving for the variable g, we see that it's got a times 5, so we'll do the opposite, divide by 5. That gives us g equals 25. So 25 guests is when the green plan and the blue plan are equal. If we look back at the graph, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. We can see the place where the blue plan and the green plan are equal, where those two graphs cross. 
and putting the grid on the graph, I can see that it is at 25 guests where the blue plan and the green plan are equal. So a lot of the patterns that we have observed before about linear models, like using the starting amount and the rate of change, can still be applied to some situations that seem a little bit more complex, but they are actually just made up of linear pieces. They could be called piecewise linear models.